So I'm gonna show you guys three ways on how to block someone punching you in the face. We learn all these blocks in martial arts, parry blocks, outward blocks, all these grabbing blocks, all this stuff, right? But in self-defense, you have to really dumb it down. So there's really, there's three specific categories of blocks and you guys are gonna run a drill doing these blocks. Now there are, each one of these categories, you can do a variety of different types of blocks, but nonetheless, these are the three areas of blocking, right? An example, the first one, just kind of throw a punch out there for me and keep it out there. The first one we're looking at is extended block. That's you extending your arm to block the strike. We can see this in a variety of ways, whether that's inward block, outward block, upward block. That's your typical karate martial arts style block, your extended blocks. That could be parries. Again, I could parry that thing off and shoot in, or I can hard block, you know, to push it out of the way and then come in to shoot in to grapple. Either way, you extend the block. Notice that when I say extend the block, there wasn't one time that I backed up and turned my back to my opponent. That is not a blocking technique. You guys are better moving forward than you are moving backwards. Remember that. So anytime you guys are sparring and you're doing kumite drills and someone's coming after you and you turn around like this and you're showing your back or you're showing your ass to your opponent, the chances of being successful in that match is going to be remarkably slim, okay? So we're gonna work some drills on the extended blocks. Extended blocks are good. One, it helps you navigate direction. So if he throws that jab again, and let's say that I'm gonna shoot in for like an inward, I can move my body off this direction. So you don't wanna just do this and stand still. You wanna make sure that you're moving offline of attack regardless of what I'm shooting in for, right? So this is your extended block. Someone's trying to beat you in the head, you're gonna extend and move. So it's, it's good for moving. Extended blocks are also good in case you guys are carrying some sort of a sidearm or self-defense weapon or tool. So if he throws it out like that, I can catch. It gives me an opportunity to pull whatever I need or whatever I'm doing, right? It, maybe he has a weapon or whatever, but the extended blocks are what's good for that. Number two, pillow block. <clears throat> One that you guys should be really good and comfortable with. This is gonna be good if it is a empty handed fight. Obviously, if he has a weapon, the extended blocks are the way to go because you want to stay the hell away from the, the individual that has a weapon, right? But now let's say it's Taijit, so it's empty handed. If he throws a hook shot with the backhand coming in, that is your pillow block. A pillow block, in Japanese it's called Makuro Uke. That hand is going to cover the temple and the eye and the ear just like that. You're going to bring that elbow in just like this. You're absorbing by moving in. He throws that again. I'm going to absorb by moving in and bang, come in this way or strike the face or come into the groin or whatever I'm doing, right? You're covering the face because the face is the target and you're shooting in. And that's called Makuro Uke or pillow block, okay? Great if you're going in. The third one, I call it cover position. We use lots of drills in here with cover position. You guys all know that. And that's basically, you're gonna take your hands, you're gonna put them together and you're just gonna cover position like a shield using the back of those hands and you're just gonna cover up, your hands cover the back of the head as you're moving in. None of these techniques should be done by backing up, moving away, or allowing someone to kick your ass. Each one has a specific reason why. Example, again, if he throws, throw uh, uh, Kazami one more time for me. If he throws Kazami and I'm going to do extended blocks, I'm trying to maintain distance, smack it away and change the angles, right? If we do Makura Uke, pillow block, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to absorb and move with it to then come in as some sort of like a grappling maneuver. So throw that hook shot again. So I'm here and then I can come in and grab and then shoot in. So I'm going to take the shot, right? And then come in. Your this one is very similar to what I call the cover position. Your cover position is just a hinka or a variation of the pillow block. The only difference is you're not turning your body sideways. When you do Makura Uke, shoot that again for one more time. I'm gonna come in here, and as I notice my hip is ready, and it gives me an opportunity to come in with some sort of a, a, an offensive technique. But if you're getting blitzed, this double cover, you're, not, you're taking away the, the opportunity of some sort of a, an initial counter, but you're making sure that you're double protected on the head. So let's say that he you got kind of tee off, right, left, right, left, right. So I'm gonna go like this, bang, 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 bang. I can kind of keep that, and then I can move moving like this, right? So it's one of those things where you're trying to find that opening. So if you're getting blitzed, it's here. So 
someone's teeing off on your head, and again, I know this is kind of funny because you guys train here, you know people want to punch each other in the head. People on the internet don't know that. It's amazing how many times you watch on YouTube videos, and this is the self-defense technique that they try to defend themselves against. So let's go to Shazin. I'm going to be the attacker, and this is just so normal. He's just a normal guy, you know, multiple level black belt that's just a normal guy, and he gets out of his car, and then someone does this. <laughs> That is not very, we've seen it, right? Come on, you all have YouTube. We've seen that. That is not very realistic. How many times watch the Rocky Balboa movies, the boxing movies, you know, like, huh, oh, I'm like this. Mm -hmm. It looks good, doesn't it? Come on, because they could flex their muscles. You know, you can see the, the chest muscles, the striations <coughs> in the chest, striations in the shoulders. You have those forearms bulging, and you can just see it. You can't see the chest muscles and the shoulder muscles if you're doing this. But my thing is, is when people are attacking you on the street, they want to hit your head. They don't want to punch you in the chest. They don't want to punch you in the stomach. I get it. In, in karate competition or kempo competition or kickboxing or whatever. Well, kickboxing hits the head. But a lot of these, what we would call classical or traditional martial arts, they, they, their points are here. And they train to score points. You, you, you catch what I'm saying? Right. So we need to stay away from that and train for what, what it is that we're, we're training for, which is to protect yourself. If someone's going to fight you, they want to punch that, and you have to be really good at defending that, right? So today we're going to look on blocks to defend that. And the first thing you have to do to defend that, look at I keep going at him, right? Keep those damn hands up. You have your hands up to where you can actually defend it, whether it's the extended blocks, the pillow blocks, you know what I mean, the cover blocks. My hands are up. I'm not here and then extending the block. I'm not here and then, you know, the pillow block. I'm not here and then cover block. I'm here. I'm already up and ready in position to be able to do what I need to do. Whether that's extend, pillow, cover, counter. Right? Now I just want to end the video with this. Today we worked on three different types of blocks used to defend yourself against someone trying to strike you in the head. Now although there are a variety of different types of blocks one could use, today we're just using these three in the particular drills that we had on the dojo floor. When looking at these different types of blocks, we're looking at the extended blocks where your hands are going to be extended out from the body and you're trying to parry or block the particular attack away while changing the angle of the attack or you're going to have the pillow blocks in Makura Uke where you're going to absorb the attack with one hand ready for a counter attack or you're going to have a double hand up, double coverage and usually when you're double coveraging you're working angles and footwork to change your position to deliver some sort of a strike like a kick to create distance so that you can evade. So those are the three types of blocking philosophies that we use in today's drill. We weren't really focused so much on this inward block or this outward block or an upward block or a downward block. Or, that really wasn't the concept. The concept was to work on various different techniques to utilize extended arm blocking maneuvers to create a distance or to create different angles to work counters. We also worked on the makuru uge or the pillow block to be able to absorb and then come in with some sort of a counter. We also worked on a variety of different attacks like flurry attacks to double coverage up, take the attack, work the angle, use our kicking and footwork skills to create distance to evade. Again, lots of different things that you can use, lots of different things that you can learn and practice to develop the skills that you need to protect yourself and the ones that you love. So if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I do post two to three videos every single week. If you guys are interested in training in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, please check out my website at budodininjutsu.com. There you guys can see a list of the seven traditions and the difference of philosophies and strategies that we teach. If you don't live next to one of our schools, you guys can always join the Budodukai online ninjutsu dojo and start training that way. So thank you guys very much for your love and support. I deeply appreciate it. Until next time, take care, be safe, and good luck in your journey of Budo. Bye.